had uh, a really shitty wrestling year. Um, and I, 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 I have a book out called Failing Upward Death by Ego. And it is uh, the first book, and it's going to be a series of books because I have a lot of journals to go through. But what happened was, uh, I talk about it in that book, mm-hmm. Jing Bao on Amazon. Yeah, I'm going to buy it today. <laughs> I also have the Weight Cut Bible is, is on Amazon also. Hey, 30 pounds and what is it? Uh, eight 30 weeks? pounds and eight weeks. I got you, bro. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so what I did was after I had, it was like my sophomore year where I started. Uh, so I was like uh, the first time I was like really the starter and I was first time I was really cutting weight too. So I had problems, but I also wrestled a lot of top guys. I think uh, um, yeah. I, wrestled, I wrestled like 16 of the top 20 guys that year. And I wrestled mm-hmm. one of them twice. Mm-hmm. So like I was wrestling really tough guys. Cause I was at Purdue and wrestled mm-hmm. a lot of big 10 guys in Iowa and, you know, just tough people. Yeah. And so after that shitty year, like I'm not used to losing, I went eight and 31. Mm-hmm eight wins, 31 losses. Sure. And that's somebody who was like, I placed twice in high school state. Like mm-hmm. I was the man most of the time. I'm not, I wasn't used to that at all. So I was like, when you get, when you have such a bad experience, it's either like you quit and you give up and you realize, oh, I'm not cut out for this. Or you double down. You're like, I need to just focus on one thing and whatever. And I realized I had to cut a lot of bullshit out mm-hmm. and I had to work a lot harder. So I started to do that, but at the same time, our coach gave us all little journals okay. and they're supposed to be like workout journals here, you know, take, take, uh, these document, your workouts, your weight, what you're doing. And we're supposed to use it for the, for the spring. It was after the season, spring and summer until the next year. So like we see how progress was going. Okay. And I did, I used the journal to, uh, keep, you know, progress reports and like, what did I do? What did I lift? You know, there's a lot of stuff of me being hard on myself because I missed a workout because I got drunk the night before or whatever. And then, you know, I cleaned up my act a lot. And man, like the next year I had a very successful uh, season, yeah. you know, yeah. for me in Big Ten, you know. Uh, and then I got hurt uh, around the, my, um, around Christmas time. So I missed half of my my junior uh, wrestling experience. And then senior year, I had, a, I had a pretty good year, too. I was yeah. over time. I was an overtime uh, point away from qualifying for the nationals Mm -hmm. and it was against a guy who was a two time um, all American already. So like there was, I was, I was this close to maybe all American, you know, I just missed it. Yeah. And the process of writing everything down really, I think helped because it it changed my attitude. It changed how I did things and approach things. And I kind of stopped, you know, I, I kept the journal from the spring till beginning of the school year mm-hmm. next year and then I stopped because I kind of had the program in but yeah. then I started you know I graduated was a grad assistant and started fighting and then I had stumbled across the journal again and I was like oh hey wait a minute uh, you know um yeah maybe I should try this again maybe I should mm-hmm. document this again and it was it was shortly after my uh I think my second pro loss which is Wilson Govea mm-hmm. and that loss really kind of opened my eyes because Govea was a full-time train was a full-time fighter. That's all he did was train and fight. Yeah. You know, uh, because he was at a American top team at the time and they had mm-hmm. money uh, from investors who were paying these guys to just train and fight. Yeah. You know, I was like, you can't compete with, with guys who are only training. Like if right. they're training two, three times a day and that's all they're doing, they don't have to have a job because right. they're taken care of. I was like, how are you going to, how are you going to touch that? I was like, you can't. And I was in Indiana. There was no one to train with. There wasn't no black belts around. There was, mm-hmm. there was nothing, you know, maybe some Taekwondo. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, or I could drive to India and maybe find a boxing coach. Right. But like it just wasn't, it wasn't uh, easy to, to get the training needed. So mm-hmm. I found my way to California and AKA. And uh, I had, I had already started the journal. I, I uh, documented the process of moving out to California mm-hmm. And, you know, I just kept up with it. And as time progressed, the journals got more detailed and I started putting more in. Because at first it was like 7 a.m., get up, lift, run. Sure. I eat well today, weight is this much. And that was like the day's entry. Mm-hmm. But then over time, it became like, oh, I felt like shit today. This girl hurt my feelings and whatever. You know, it was sure. like everything. And then as I noticed when I started fighting and I was with the UFC, like it really helped to be able to backtrack to other fight camps and mm-hmm. see where I was like oh man look like three fights in a row mm-hmm. I hit a wall on the fifth sixth week and right. I felt like shit right 
Yeah. So the fake camp around that time period, if I felt that creep of like overtraining, whatever, I was like, Hey, you know what? I need to take a couple of days off. Kind of pull back. Wow. Yeah. Man, that's awesome. It and came to school I, for you. Yeah. Yes. And then instead of feeling like shit for seven days, I felt a little off for one day, took a break, got my mind and my body back, and then had a great finish to the rest of the camp. The, 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 